Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean with STC Dressage. Today, we're talking about how to show your horse in hand. So we're going to be going over today all the, the things I do to prepare and then actually go and show a horse in hand. Be sure you go ahead and watch this video all the way through because I'm going to go ahead and actually show you on a horse exactly what I'm explaining here over the next couple minutes. Also be sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to grow this channel so that I can keep producing these videos for you. I've been showing horses in hand for probably I would say 15 years or more actually. And I've done breed shows, I've done dressage at Devon, I've done a bunch of them out here on the west coast. I've shown uh, horses at inspections for pretty much all the major warm blood breeds as well as Frisians and I've done some Arabian shows. So I've, I've done a, a few. So we're going to be making sure that we've got them trimmed up really nice, all the, all the lines are nice and clean, the legs look nice and sharp and tight. We're going to make sure that they're braided correctly, it depends on the horse. Most of them you're going to do your typical button braids like you would for the dressage ring. Um, the horse I'm going to show you actually, she's a Morgan. So we're going to do the running braid on her uh, because the breed characteristic is that she would have the long mane. It would be the same for the Frisians or even the Andalusians. And we're just going to go over a couple of other things that I would normally do to make sure that they're set up the best they can be to get the best scores they can in the confirmation phase. Man, those birds are loud today. Now showing a horse consists of two phases. The first phase is the confirmation judging. You're going to be standing that horse up right in front of the judge just a couple feet away. They're going to go around your whole horse and they're going to look at over every inch. They're going to look at the legs, the neck, the saddle position, the croup. Uh, top line, they're, they're looking at pretty much everything. The second phase of showing in hand is actually walking and trotting around the triangle. The triangle I'm going to show you set up in my arena is not to scale. My arena is not big enough, but it's the biggest I can fit in my arena and it will show you the basic concepts of what you're going to have to do. And I'm also going to show you some common faults that I see a lot of people doing that really, really hurt their scores. Right, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going over here is the things that I normally do when I'm getting a horse ready to show in hand. <laughs> it's very important to make sure that you do have the mane braided. And no matter what age they are, even a foal, when I'm picking a foal out, I've got the mane braided. And the forelock as well, of course. This horse, because she's got a longer mane, I would tend to have her braided in the running mane down the, down the neck rather than, than trying to roll these up into to, you know, typical button braids like you would do on a, a normal horse. Um, if you want to see how I do that, I'll put a link here and also in the comments below and show you exactly how I do the running braid. First thing we're going to, we're going to go from front to back basically here. So starting at the head here, uh, first thing I'll, I'll say is I never trim the whiskers on the muzzle. Even on my riding horses, I never trim those anymore. It's actually against FEI rules at this point. You know, there's no reason to do it. They, they need those, so I leave them and you should too. So I'll go ahead and zoom in here and see if we can see this. These hairs under here, all these little wispy ones, these I do trim. We're trying to get so you've got a nice clean line in the jaw, underneath the, the jaw, through the neck, the throat latch area here. We want that to be nice and clean and as tight as possible. So all those little wispy hairs there, we're going to trim all of those off. So you can see I'm holding, I'm not holding the clippers this way. If you hold the clippers this way when you're trimming, you're more likely to kind of gouge into their hair too much and you'll end up leaving big marks. So I always go this way and just lightly go over those little wispy hairs just to take those wispy hairs down. Yeah, and you can see how that gives a little bit neater appearance, there's a little more definition to her jawline that way. Going up a little bit higher, I never clean the ears out completely. They, again, they need that hair in there, it keeps bugs out, so that's not something that I prefer to do. However, I am going to get all the little extra hairs out. I don't know if you can see that or not, but these little 
I call it the, the sticky outie here. So I'll just take my clippers and just go straight down the front just to clean that edge up, but I won't actually go in the ear and, and clean all that hair out of there. They need that. Continuing to move back, obviously the bridal path. That's a big one. It, it looks terrible if you've got a bridle and all this little stuff sticking out the side of it. It looks horrible, it looks unprofessional, it looks like you don't really care, and we don't want to do that. So then we'll get into the legs again. It's a little bit the same thing as everywhere else. She does have these little bit of wispy hairs here. Because she's a Morgan, she tends to get a little bit feathery down here. I don't really want that. If we don't want them to see that the horse looks like it's got really thick, stocked up legs. Yeah, you want to show good bone, but they shouldn't look like they're thick and stocked up and they have no definition. That's not very helpful. If it's a, if it's a horse like a Frisian, those I do leave the feathers on because it is very characteristic of the breed to, to have the feathers, so I will leave the feathers on the Frisians. I'll take these off down to where the feathers start so that they've got the feathers but the line down to it, you got a nice tight leg. So same thing with the legs, we're not going to go up this way because you're likely to gouge into the hair and, and make it look really rough. So we're going to take the, the clippers again, not, not going in like that, just gently down the leg like that just to get these wispy hairs off. And so again, now you can see how much cleaner of a line that gives the leg. You can really see the definition, the angles of the pasterns, and everything looks just much, much nicer that way. So we'll do the same thing with the back legs. I was considering waiting to do this video until after she had gotten her feet trimmed because she is due for a trim. You can obviously see that. Um, but I actually chose to do this beforehand to highlight the importance of this as well. So you can see again, she's got a little piece missing from the foot. The toe is a little bit long uh, or longer than I'd like to see it for, for taking her to a show. But that is something I actually would like to point out when the judge sees that, they're going to see a horse that's not in the right balance, that's not in the right angle, and they're going to mark you down for that. So that actually is something I, I preferred to show you rather than waiting a few days until after the farrier comes to, to get her all evened up. We don't want that to, to show at a competition when, when she's going to be judged for confirmation. You always want to make sure that you've got your farrier out, especially if it's a horse that's barefoot like this, but even with a, a shod horse, that you go about a week to two weeks after your farrier visits so that their feet look nice and fresh and are properly balanced and in the right shape. So then we're going to move to the, the ventral line, the midline on, on their belly. Again, it's the same thing. I'm going to be looking to take all of these little wispy hairs down because these little wispy hairs are going to make it look like she's not as in good shape. She, it's going to make her look a little bit fuzzy. Uh, the definition of, of her body is not going to be as good. Just to keep it looking a little bit cleaner, a little bit sleeker lines. Again, in the back, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to be taking these little wispy hairs off of here and just making sure that we get a good definition down the back leg. Now, one thing you'll notice, I am not going directly behind the horse. The horse doesn't have to be kicking at you. They can be kicking at the fly and you're in the way. And you're still, well, yeah, you can figure that out. Stay out of the way. And again, much nice, neater, and, and cleaner look that way, and um, just keeps the, the definition on the legs much, much better that way. So then finally we come to the tail. The tail, uh, I go back and forth on. I used to trim the tail. I don't as much as I used to anymore. Again, I try to keep things a little bit more natural. So you can see the difference here when it's all fuzzy like this. It doesn't give quite as nice of a line. If I tuck that in just a little bit, like, like it would look if we trim that with, with scissors or a pair of clippers. There. So you can see the difference then just by making it a nice clean line, it gives it a much better appearance. So depending on the horse, I might go ahead and take the clippers and just, just a little bit trim the edges at the top of the tail just to give it that little bit neater look like that. Right, so let's go ahead and head out to the arena. 
So the first thing you're going to see is me bring the horse out and stand her up. And what we're looking for is what we call the open stance, where the right hind leg, the offside leg, is a little bit farther forward and the right front leg is just slightly back. So you see there, I brought her front leg just a little too far forward. As I go to shift her back, you're going to see me move to the inside a little bit, not just push straight back. The reason for that, if you push straight back, they'll usually step back with the hind leg as well as the front leg. If you take them slightly to the side, you can get them to move just a front leg. Now, I'm actually going to be trying to get her to stretch her neck just a little bit here as well so she gets a little bit better look over the top line and that's pretty much all you have to do when you're standing up the judge is going to move around you and just kind of stay out of the way then as the judge moves around that you step out of the judge's way so they can see the horse from all angles so we're going to go ahead and do the walk I'm going to show you a very common fault that I see a lot of people doing when they get a little bit too much contact on the reins and they tend to pull on the horse or maybe they're trying to drag it along that doesn't matter but you can see as I pull her head to the inside it makes her hind legs swing out out away from me and you can't see her tracking very straight anymore. And the whole point of this is that we see how the horse tracks with the hind legs. As we go across, you can see how she's a little bit stiff and stabby. Then I'm going to go ahead and ask her to hurry a little bit and you can see how the rhythm of the walk then goes away a little bit. So you want to be careful not to walk too fast. And then again as I bring her up short, you can see how all of a sudden she's not stepping through anymore. She's not working through her back. Coming towards, the idea is that we can see how the front legs are tracking, but as I'm pulling on her and messing around with her head, it really messes up the, the way she steps with her front legs. So let's go ahead and watch now the correct way to do it. You can see that I'm not pulling on her head. I've actually got a little bit of slack. You're able to really get a clear picture of how her hind legs are tracking behind, whether there's there's straight, if she's got any deviation, and then same thing going across. Now you can really see how I don't have contact with the reins. I'm just allowing her to move through her body. And while we would like to see a little bit more over track, you can see how she's moving through her back. She's swinging through her back. It's a nice, clear, four-beated walk. And then again, same thing towards us. I'm not interfering with her head you can get a very clear picture of how her front legs are tracking if there's any deviation paddling winging anything like that so then we're going to go ahead and do the trot with some common errors and again I'm interfering with the head you see me pulling you see how she's stepping wide behind she's not tracking straight you can't get a clear picture of how the horse is moving same thing going across this way look how stabby those hind legs are look at how tight the trot is and she's obviously very crooked she's not moving out and again coming towards same thing you don't get a clear picture of how she's moving the number one cause of this is because the horse is simply going too fast and the person can't keep up so then we're going to do a good trot and you're going to be able to see how I'm not interfering she's tracking straighter going across the backside you're going to see a much more loose and swinging trot a much more active trot and coming towards again we're not pulling the head sideways so you can see a much more clear trot I don't prefer to personally overschool the work on the triangle. I think it makes them a little bit too well behaved. I know that sounds uh, perhaps counterintuitive. I want that little bit of a spark in there. If they're too well behaved, if they're too relaxed, they don't show as well because they just I'm out for a Sunday stroll. They're not going to get the good scores that way. If they've got a little bit of fire in their belly, they're going to take a bigger step. They're going to kind of huff themselves up a little bit and get a little more powerful stride and that's what we want. We want that big powerful stride. So that's all we've got for today. Uh, if you've got any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to chat with you down there. If you have any videos that you'd like to see me do with product reviews or training tips or anything else, please drop me a line. I'd be happy to work on them and get some of those videos out there for you guys. Until next time, happy riding. We'll talk to you soon.